Welcome back to the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. Tree diaper. It's pretty much done growing for most of us here in uh, the northern portions of the United States. But you've had some problems. We've had problems. Uh, if you forgot to water, your plants died. Tree diaper uh, is a device that will prevent that. Absolutely. Tree diaper is a revolutionary watering system that slowly releases water over the around the base of your plants or trees as the soil dries. This happens over three weeks. Um, they f- it fills with water when you when it waters or it rains. No more watering or underwatering, overwatering, underwatering with the tree diaper. Every time it rains, tree diaper recharges. No pipes, hoses, or electricity needed. You can water your plants and trees whether you're down the ho- by your house, down the road, back forty, etc. Works under mulch. Whether you're a first-time gardener or advanced, tree diaper will improve the way you water your plants. You can go to treediaper.com. They have multiple sizes and uh, solutions. So that's treediaper.com. Well, um, as we're uh, getting into the end of gardening season, uh, we can kind of expand the topics of conversation on the program here. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about self-care DIY organic methods. Like natural. Yeah. Like stuff you have in your kitchen type of thing. Not something Um, you pick a bottle up and you got to sit down because it's a novel of all the things that was involved in order making there's nothing wrong with that. You know, people have... But there's some people, it, it, it's right. very concerning whenever they pick something up and there's 75 ingredients when it should be like four. Right. Or, okay. you know, this is good for a rainy or snowy day and you're like, oh, I just got dumped on with snow. I don't want to go anywhere, but I'm going to make myself... I've got this a, stuff. I got some stuff, right? So um, I think one of my favorite DIY uh, things you can do is make a little face mask and you can find all sorts of uh recipes online but a lot this of, is for the, for like the skin face. yeah yeah, yeah. skin yeah. on your face mm-hmm. yeah 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 <laughs> not for halloween not for halloween i mean it could be husbands don't do don't use that joke <laughs> it's it's only funny if there's a lot of people in the room anyway. and they're and they're on your side right <laughs> pretty much so anyway um you know there's all sorts of recipes from yogurt pumpkin pumpkin puree and uh-huh. you might have some of that at this time of year um bananas honey um i'm trying to think of what else i've seen i wouldn't it, say it, like, avocado isn't that something oh yeah avocado they, they put on yeah yeah cucumbers are good for around the eyes yeah yeah, yeah. cucumbers are anti-inflammatory uh-huh. absolutely you know some things joey i know some stuff about a few things yeah mm-hmm. sometimes um another one is uh bath salts so uh, you take Epsom salt and then you mix in some um, essential oils and you make yourself some nice little bass salts to soak in or you can do it for your feet, what have you. Mm-hmm. Um, sugar scrub. Now, if you what, what, what is a sh- what is sugar a, scrub? When, is like whenever an- you see these things for people who are, may not understand all of it, when you see a skin scrub or, or that type of thing, what is the purpose of using that on yourself so skin scrub is to exfoliate which means that you're basically like sloughing off the dead skin okay so which naturally would come off anyway right yeah yes and no okay um sometimes you know you might feel a little flaky especially in winter okay so you use like the, like what, what some people may define as ashy ashy yeah yeah, yeah. okay around yeah. like elbows or knees you'll see that more right. prevalent there Absolutely. And so it's fun to, to have these scrubs and then you scrub yourself off. I would highly recommend if you are using a sugar scrub, just make sure you avoid um, places that in your body that create more heat, like mm-hmm. your underarms. If you have uh, excess weight where skin rubs skin against folds, yeah. Yeah, that type of thing, things like that. So just keep it maybe like on your legs arms elbows well, would you say experiment in an area that's not you know make sure it's going to not cause irritation or well, yeah, yeah if you no. have sensitive skin you may want to be aware of that but what i'm saying is that even if you don't when you're using these products make sure you rinse thoroughly because mm-hmm. you don't want to have that sugar that residue left left over on your skin and and and, and well, as we talk through these things and there's probably somebody in a combine listening to this going I'm not going to do this. Uh, is, this is a girl topic. This is a woman topic, but it's not really. No, it's not. It's just like happy self care. I've ex- I gave you an exfoliation one. Yeah, time. You, was that on the feet? Wasn't that what that was? It's like your feet and your yeah. legs. Yeah, yeah. We did some. I think we were snowed in, and we did some pedicures or something. Well, I I didn't ever get no. I didn't get no pedicures, <laughs> but you did <laughs> I rub did give the, exfoliation. the exfoliation. Right. Yeah. yeah, you soaked your feet. Yes, that's part of a pedicure. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now you're the guy in the combine. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, and then also there's things like a lot of people will put coconut oil on their skin. Mm-hmm. That is something that some people do have issues of it clogging pores. Right. It is it is a possibility. And so some of you may be allergic to coconut and don't even know it. So you want to be aware of that. It's also good for oral uh, care. There, there's some yeah, benefits well, to like using. Oral pulling. Well, yeah. Not necessarily removing cavities, but giving your mouth a, a healthier thing, being healthier in your right, mouth. Yeah. Right. Um, good thing to know. The good thing to remember is that because coconut oil becomes more solid above room temperature, mm-hmm. you want to keep that in mind. Don't dispose of it down your drain. Right. Yeah. And it will last pretty much forever. It will go bad, but it's got quite a shelf life on it. Um, apple cider vinegar as a hair rinse. What What are we talking about? A lot of people will do this after they wash their hair. Um, they use it as like a hair rinse, like almost like a cream rinse or so. Not like a con- oh, like like a conditioner. Like conditioner okay, yeah. I've never done this because I have very thick hair. Right, you got um, a mop up there. Yeah, and I what what, uh, what is this supposed to? What it's is supposed it? to like help kind of clarify it and bring shine because the, the apple cider vinegar it has a, a a very low ph right does that have any effect to any of this stuff or something about the shine okay yeah um but that's the thing now you would not apply full apple cider vinegar you would water it down a little dilute bit. it yeah definitely um make your own tea so maybe you know you have some herbs laying around or you grew herbs you dried them you can enhance your tea maybe you have some mint and you are going to enjoy a cup of tea and you add the mint leaves to it well the the it's time for a cup of tea uh, tea is a very and we've got people that listen and we're not making fun of you those of you listening in the uk tea is it's god country and tea and then right. family i right. mean that's kind of the, the order that it goes in yeah, the country like shuts down for tea every day right and, and it bring it's something that unites the country to some level i guess um, the, the Americans, uh, we we haven't caught on to that uh, quite as tradition. I, I guess it's traditional and and historic and gives time to. Ref- I don't know, understand all of it, but it's pretty cool that like everybody drinks tea over there, no matter what temperature it is. Absolutely. Um, and then dyeing your hair with coffee, which you have done. I have done, and there's also alternative methods to dye your hair besides coffee, but this is the one beet, I can beet juice. Beet juice, yeah. This is one I can speak about. And so basically, I use the coffee grounds, and I use the coffee itself, and I put the. And this was not. This wasn't. This, you specifically brewed this coffee for the hot hair dye application. Right. Yeah. I mean, I didn't put the hot coffee on my head. No, but you had to brew it, and you yeah. had to and let it cool, and then yeah. you use that as the dye mechanism right. tool. Basically, you brew very very strong coffee, mm-hmm. so you don't you don't you know water down too much, and then. You take the coffee grounds and you mix them in with the leave-in conditioner, and then you put this coffee. Then you apply the liquid part of the coffee, and then you put your hair in a plastic bag, mm-hmm. and you let it sit and soak. And then your hair, if your hair is porous, my hair is very porous, so it did absorb a lot of that brown color. It was a temporary dye; it right. did eventually wash out. It's, you but don't go into this expecting like the stuff you buy at the store, where it's instantly no. shades different. Boom! Totally from light to almost black. Right. No. V- very subtle. It is very subtle. I had had some blonde highlights. This darkened them a bit. It wasn't life changing or altering, but it was cool. It was uh-huh. cool to try it. And also putting leaving that leave-in conditioner in my hair while it was dying in the process really softened it. Okay. So that's another thing is that it really um, was almost like a hair treatment. All right. Now, if you have maybe thinner hair, not so porous hair. Would something um, like that work for people who are graying, or is it more somebody that's already got a good density of pigmentation already in their hair that's similar to the color of the coffee? I mean, I think that because the gray hair is more coarse, it's probably more porous. And so it, more it probably would absorb, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was fun. I thought it was cool. Um, it's a whole process. You definitely have to keep in mind that you have you are rinsing the coffee, essentially. When, the when you're doing this, don't expect to go to work at 7 o'clock that night. Take the whole evening to do such a, a project. Yeah, you want to give yourself some time, especially because the longer you leave it on, the more it's spo- supposed to absorb. Mm-hmm. Just like a lot of temporary hair dye, you longer leave it on, the more it's supposed to absorb. So that's another one. Um, I think definitely if you have the time and the patience to make soap, yes. that's another one. And um, You got to get like, lye, which is sometimes difficult to obtain. 
Yeah, I think there is like other ways to make mm-hmm. cold process soaps though. But and and we don't have a a soap sponsor, but I I've been uh, what would you say ten years using homemade soap essentially. Yeah, totally different from and, and from store bought, night and day. Um, what do you like about it? You use this. It's very soft. It's got a fragrance to it. It doesn't have a chemical residue that feels like it's left uh, on your skin. The natural soap cleanses, cleans, and then washes away, and it doesn't feel like there's a film left on your skin. If you're still using commercial-grade, store-bought soap from the big companies, take $5, go buy you a bar of soap, and just see how much of a difference it makes. It is worth the extra dollars. Do you think it lasts longer? I think it's about the same. Okay. Now, I will say, if you leave it in the shower, if you put a commercial bar and, and a, I call it homemade soap, but uh, natural soap, and you leave it on the shelf, the natural soap is going to dissolve much quicker than the commercial soap. What we're talking about is the natural soap is when, like, we I get it from the organic food co-op or sometimes online. It's specifically but, made with much safer yeah. ingredients than the big companies that you buy at the big Big grocery stores or convenience stores, that type of thing. And sometimes you can smell like a tree. Right. Yeah. And, and lavender and sawdust. Sand, sand, or, yeah. Sand uh, yeah. Cedar. Very, yeah. very good. Uh, yeah. Good well, time. Holly, summer's over. We've experienced this. We know this. Snow's coming in some places. Kids are in school. Nights are getting cold. But hey, there's still time to get that lawn figured out and fixed before it goes to bed for the winter. Just because it's fall, we don't want to forget about our lawns. Um, you know, those Japanese beetles, they've been around. They may be gone, but they're not far away. They feasted on your roses and berries this summer. They laid eggs in your turf. You can take a stand with grub gone from phylum. It's a non-chemical BT granular that specifically targets scared pests and their larvae. You simply apply the granule with a spreader, irrigate into the soil, and let the naturally occurring bacteria do its job. Not only is grub gone easy to use, because Holly just explained how easy it was, it's the only non-chemical choice that effectively controls grubs. And the best part, it's non-toxic to pollinators, the beneficial ones, such as bees, butterflies, and other pollinating insects. Uh, Grub Gone has zero restrict label restrictions, so you don't have to worry about it toxifying anything. Get your Grub Gone. You go to BeetleGone.com. That's BeetleGone.com to get your Grub Gone. And when you are there, you can save 10% on your order by using coupon code GARDENTALK10 at Grub Gone. To get your, uh, to get your Grub Gone, you go to BeetleGone and use coupon code GARDENTALK10 to save 10% on your order. We go through a lot of coupon codes. We've got a lot of companies with coupon codes. You can go to our parent website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, and click on the Money tab at the top of the page, and they're all listed for you. For more information, please visit the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com.